What's good everybody, it's your boy Eddie and welcome back to the channel and I hope you all are having a wonderful day. And for today's video, we are actually reviewing a brand new sneaker release, something that I have been personally waiting for for about two years now. And it originally debuted as a tennis sneaker, but more recently has been worn by the likes of LeBron James and Travis Scott, and even had Travis Scott in the marketing campaign, which was pretty fire. But before we even continue this review, guys, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below as well as that notification bell. And what we got right here is none other than the Nike Mac Attack. And I have to say one more time, I think that this sneaker is really fly and looks dope and can actually go with a lot of different outfits. More specifically for me, if you're wearing these in the summer, I would wear these with some white high Nike socks, some nice shorts, and then obviously a graphic tee, a vintage tee if you have that, or even like a white Supreme t-shirt or Hanes t-shirt just to keep it simple. Then if we were looking to wear these joints in the fall, which I would definitely more preferably wear this outfit with, I definitely would wear it with some wax denim jeans or some wax cargoes or some just basic cargoes to lay right on top of that and just layer it with a hoodie type joint and I think that would go together. Kind of similar but different to how Travis Scott wore it when he originally wore it. During the Houston Rockets game, if I'm not mistaken, he had these kind of Rick Owen wax cargoes and them joints look super fly with it and he had this kind of bubble coat over it. I personally wouldn't wear that bubble coat but it definitely fit with the outfit and it wasn't Easy Gap either. I don't remember what brand it was but it was overall a pretty nice outfit. The way Braun wore it, I'm not really too much of a fan of because he had like the tight white jeans and stuff. So to me, that didn't go really together with the whole outfit. But between the two of them, I would have to say that Travis Scott definitely took the W in wearing the outfit because that's more so how I would have worn the outfit. Minus the bubble coat because I don't think that bubble coat would look good on me. So I'd probably just layer it with like a hoodie and like a long t-shirt type joint. But anyways, guys, let's just go right into the box details real quick. And when comparing it to the OG, this is actually pretty close and reminiscent to it. But when actually comparing the size of this box to the OG box, the OG box is probably about this size, so about a quarter more than the OG box. And it's also interesting to note that the OG silhouette was way sleeker than the 2023 retro version of it, which is pretty interesting. I don't personally own it, but based on what I've seen in a YouTube video with a guy who had the OG pair versus the new pair, everything was just way more sleeker and looked pretty clean. But again, I'm in love with the shoe and still think that this is a very good retro. I think the quality could have been better. When we actually turn to this side of the box now, you can actually see that it says 7392 attack. And personally, guys, I don't know what that number stands for, so I'm not gonna really speak on it. And then when we go into this side of the box right here, it does read off as Nike attack quick strike sp and it's actually interesting that they took out the mac out of the title of this sneaker because the original is the nike mac attack but even with the current marketing campaign for these sneakers john mcenroe who is the title of this sneaker is in the ad and he's playing tennis with the shoes on but they just took him out maybe for legal reasons i'm really not too sure to be honest with you guys but that's interesting that they changed that up and then when we look at the colorway it does say lt small gray black and white and then i did went with my true to size of a size eight and i tried these on already guys and i recommend to 100 percent go true to size they fit pretty much like an air jordan one and i normally go true to size with air jordan one so that's what i recommend to go with these and when we open this box guys there's not much to present us with other than the fact that we do have this white wax tissue paper right here and then on the sides of the box when we take off the lid you can see that we still have some of those checkerboard details which i think is a really nice touch and sticks to that retro vibe which i really love and i'm a big fan of the 80s so i'm definitely a big fan of this shoe now when we go into the history behind the shoe i kind of spoiled it already but pretty much the tennis player john McEnroe was a rebel he was really nice because he actually won seven grand slam singles which is pretty much when you play the tennis grand slam tournaments by yourself because they do have the singles and they do have the doubles i believe that he did with some doubles as well but you know the big high ones is really the single and that shows more of your individual skills and he won seven of those and it's not easy to win that tournament so of course so anyways guys when getting back into John McEnroe he was known as a rebel back in the day it's something to know with the marketing of the sneaker today actually has the quote of rebel like the OG and then the OG John McEnroe when he was doing his marketing campaigns for these sneakers his quote was rebel with a cause so it's pretty cool how they use a quote from 1984 and almost 40 years later in 2023 they were able to mix it up and actually have himself and travis scott on that marketing campaign and i think it was pretty nice and this sneaker is getting a big push this is not just a one-shot release we actually have social status doing a collaboration with the mac attack and then for the regular sneakers i do believe that they're releasing a white and red colorway coming probably next month i believe or somewhere down this year and now guys when going on to the details of it again 
I really love this shoe, but we're gonna start off with the toe box. And when we look at this toe box, we do see that it's tumbled right there. However, I do have to say that the quality doesn't feel the best. And I feel like with this marketing campaign, especially with the likes of the OG behind the sneaker and Travis Scott, I think they could have used better materials, but again, I really do love the shoe. So we have this all gray toe box right here, and then we have some mesh for some breathability as well as flexibility right there. Then we move into the top of the shoe, you can actually see that we have the sail tongue, which looks pretty clean. Then we have these gray laces, and again, guys, I have to say that this colorway is very reminiscent of the Georgetown colorway, but obviously, instead of this being more of like a light navy, it's more of like a dark navy or midnight black, so I guess it's not really Georgetown colorways. Then we go into the top of the tongue right here, it's actually a very thin tongue. We do have this nice checkerboard retro looking tongue tab and it does have it in the blue and black colorway and then we also have this red Nike check right there which looks really nice. Then when we go onto the lateral side of the shoe right here you can see that we have some more mesh but instead of it being black and what the quarter panel area would be it's actually in this gray mesh which is really nice. And then we have a hit of that black or midnight navy whatever color you want to call it mesh right there and then right here we do have a nice black or midnight navy Nike check right there. When we go into the back heel area now you can see that on the top of the ankle area we have it in that black synthetic leather and then we also have the gray nike logo right there in the regular font so there's nothing special to it then on the medial side the same thing pretty much follows suit on the lateral side so there's not much to say right there other than the fact that on the medial side you don't have the holes right here for breathability like we have on the lateral side but that's pretty much it so now we go into the midsole we have this all white midsole which i think looks really nice and i do love the fact that they didn't pre-age it i think this is a sneaker that you have to wear over time and when it gets those little yellows and aged colorways, it's gonna make the sneaker look way better. Kind of like how the Jordan 1s work because the more you wear it, the better it looks. But my only concern would be that this shoe doesn't feel like it's as durable as the OG. I've seen some pictures where there's like a little tear on the toe box after two days of wearing. And that kind of scares me because I really wanna wear this shoe to the ground. And I don't wanna have had spend $120 and the sneaker breaks down in 2.5 seconds. Like that would be a epic fail in my opinion. So Nike, I would definitely recommend to fix your quality control on the shoe because the materials definitely could have been better. All the beautiful marketing and Travis Scott and the OG John McEnroe being in this campaign, I definitely wish that you guys chose better leather materials because this feels really like cheap to the touch i'm not gonna lie but anyways guys when we go onto the outsole of the shoe now we have this nice pattern right here i don't even know what this pattern would be called because there's a lot of squares and circles kind of looks like a video game and i'm going to assume that with this traction pattern it just feels better on the tennis clay courts i'm not 100 sure but with this unique pattern and it being like really close and low to the ground with the grip I think that's more so what it was made for. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much all the details behind the shoe because when we look at the insole, there's no Nike logo or anything, which is pretty interesting to note. I don't know why they didn't do that. And when we actually feel this insole, it's not bad, it's actually somewhat firm. I thought it was gonna be flimsy just based on the fact that there's no branding on this insole. But one thing I almost forgot to mention before we conclude, guys, is the fact that we do have the size tag number as well as the SKU number right next to it on the inside of the ankle area. But anyways, guys, that's gonna conclude the details as well as the history of the shoe. So now, let's get right into the song for look, guys. <laughs> So that's going to conclude the review as well as the on for look and i hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as i did making it for y'all guys i have to say that i really love this release i want to give it an 8 out of 10 just due to the fact that the quality is not up there man if they had a better leather if they had better materials i think that this sneaker will be a 10 out of 10 in my personal opinion definitely heard from my fiance and my bro and they weren't too much of a big fan of these sneakers they didn't really like it but i think that i could put the sneaker together with some awesome outfits and I might make a video on it one day. Who knows? I'm not really that type of guy, but I may have to put some fashion into this sneaker YouTube thing. I might have to show y'all a couple of things. But so definitely let me know what y'all think about that in the comment section down below. And other than that, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Y'all already know the whole spiel, man. So I'm going to save y'all the time. So I love you guys, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.